get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. We're at the Matchroom Gym here. Uh, I'm joined by Anthony Gogo. How are you, sir? I'm good, mate. Very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah. All good. Looking well, aren't they? Yeah, I feel good. I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape, training hard. Feeling good, ready for the next for the next season, you know? Uh, start to make some waves in the sport. That's the plan. I mean, in more or less every interview I've had with you, um, you've always sort of spoke about building up a, a momentum of fights. Um, you've had that recently. Uh, three wins in three months. Um, from Glasgow to uh, the O2 to Germany. Uh, so that's the kind of succession of fights that you wanted and you've got. Yeah, exactly, that's it. That's what, that's what I've always kind of missed out on. You know, you see people like my mate Connor Ben in, in the gym. Though he's, he turned pro recently, he's boxing all the time. And that's what I, I, I missed out on now when I first turned pro after the Olympics in 2012. 2013 when I turned pro because I was just dogged, just dogged with just adversity and negativity and, and injury after injury. So I'm finally now kind of just, just I feel like I can, I can breathe again now. I can box. I'm, I'm enjoying my life. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying coming to the to the gym every day. I'm just I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm really really loving it. And for the first time in a long time, I'm actually happy. I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. That's all. Um, it's all. It's going to be really exciting. Obviously, being an Olympic bronze medalist yourself. Uh, you would have been keeping an eye on uh, Team GB in this year's Olympics. Uh, silver medal for Joe Joyce, uh, medals for Nicola Adams and also uh, Buatzi. Uh, what have you made of it as a whole? Yeah, no, it's been great. You know, so uh, to be honest with you, I haven't really kind of haven't kept that close of an eye because just just, just not just because you know in London 2012, my mum was really really ill, really ill. I've told you about it before. Um, she was in and out of comas. You know. Uh, the whole time during the game, so I didn't. My focus is all over the place, and I do, I do believe if if, I, if that wasn't kind of bestowed upon my mum so soon before the Olympic Games, I would have won a gold medal because mentally I was just knackered. I mean, the Brazilian didn't beat me in the semi-final; just the exhaustion built beat me. I'm not training for four or five weeks before the games, just before the games as well, and mentally just not being in a very good frame of mind, I was just exhausted. And um, yeah, so I, I think my kind of love affair. Which I've had since I was like a four-year-old. Olympic Games kind of gone a little bit because because of that. When I look when I think back to Olympic Games, I think my mum, you know, one of if not the most important person in my life, being really really ill. So, you know, at the minute it's kind of it's kind of wavered a little bit. I'm sure you know, when I'm in, in a few Olympics time, I'll, I'll I'll learn to love it again. But yeah, and I was kind of keeping keeping tabs on the boys on my phone and the girls, Nicola and, and Co. See how they were getting on. I'm really pleased they did well. I know they had a really hard draw over there. They kind of you know. I think you know they 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 reached their target of three medals. So um, no, it's, it's been good. You know, it's, it's it's been really good. It's uh, you know they're kind of following on from our success in 2012, and hopefully in 2020 in Tokyo, the boys all and girls will crack on again and maybe win more than five medals that we won in in London. Obviously, whenever Olympic boxing uh, is concerned, there's always the the uproar over decisions, and um, it's favoured us in the past. It's gone against us, and and this time, I mean, uh, a lot of people. Uh, were disappointed about uh, Michael Conlon uh, mm. in his fight and also yeah. jo Joe Joyce, but um, you know only too well about <laughs> this is Olympic boxing, the scoring is, uh, yeah, is what it is, subjective, it's subjective you know. and uh, you just, you've just got to deal with it and move on. It's, it's a bit unfair really because obviously 100 metres, 200 metres, 400 metres, if you're the quickest guy, you cross the line first, so it's, it's easy, you know, there's no arguing who wins, but in boxing, your your whole life is kind of like in the hands of the judges around the ring, and they've got to like press the button for you or, or, sc or score the rounds for you. It's hard, you know, it, it is tough. You know, you, it's, it's rife in, in amateur boxing. It's rife in the competitions which aren't televised as well. So Olympic Games, it's just you know, it's, it's shouldn't be as bad. Sometimes it's worse, as we saw the the Conan decision was was horrendous. I think Joe Joyce was bad as well. Savannah Marshall, I thought she won her her fight against the Dutch girl, I think. So, there's, yeah, but uh, like you said, there's been times in the past it's kind of favoured the British boxers and Irish boxers, and sometimes it, it's gone against us. So, um, 
kind of swings around about, isn't it, really? Um, that's one of the things, one of the reasons I was so keen to turn pro. Kind of, kind of put that, put that to the side now. The whole amateur, my whole amateur career was good. I enjoyed it. I'm ready to crack on now and, and crack on as a, as a professional fighter. So I don't know if the other guys are going to do that as well. Um, but whatever they do, I, I wish them all the best. Who really sort of took your eye from uh, that Team GB squad, and who do you think will sort of turn pro more or less straight away? I haven't, like I said, I didn't, didn't watch a great deal. I saw the highlights. I kept going on Sky Sports News app, and I was seeing Bawati's knockouts. So they kept showing him and, jo and Joyce's knockouts as well. That's pretty much all I really saw. Um, I read up about it a little bit as well, you know, the days after all the fights. But yeah, I think Bawati, you know, I've sparred him once, I think, and he's a big, strong geezer. Um, nice lad as well, so I think he'll, he'll, he'll do well whether he stays amateur for four more years, probably win a gold medal in, in Tokyo if he turns pro, I'm sure he'll have a successful career. So the guys on the GB squad, I've, I've been through that system, it's a, they have a very good grounding, headed up by Rob McCracken who's in charge of the GB squad, you know, they, they teach you an awful lot. So all the guys that go and go to like the big tournaments, they're all going to do well in, in, in the pro ranks I think because of their, their ground and their education is so good. Now. Um, one notable name uh, that's popped up uh, in recent months, particularly mentioning your name, oh my God. Uh, making uh, stalker. Well, I suppose it's uh, the fool, the buffoon, the idiot. We're talking about Gary Spiko Sullivan. Um, where, where's this actually started from? I, mean, I don't know. He's, he's like I'm obsessed with being in the gym, out on the world, getting better. He's obsessed with me. I don't know what's going on. I mean. Oh Sullivan, I, I, I can't comprehend how much of a fool the boy is. I mean, he's a buffoon. He, if you, if you want me to shoot, I'll shoot. He's, uh, I mean, he's untalented. He, he can't, he doesn't deserve to, he can't, he's not good enough for a fighter to go out and earn fights, earn the big fights. So he, he takes the Twitter, takes a little keyboard, and he, he goes people into taking fights. He did it at the Eubank, he, from what I believe, he, you know, he, he pestered him for a year. It's like, it's like going to a supermarket with a kid and they go down a sweetie aisle and they see like a bar of chocolate and they whinge and whine and obsess about it. You don't give in. I'm not a parent, you know, I can't imagine how hard being a parent is, but I, even I know you don't give a whingy, whiny kid what they want, otherwise they, they, they just carry on. I mean, he's a fool, but that's all you, that's all you bang done. And to be fair, you bang, you know, he, he bashed him up. I was there, I was there in London when he bashed him up. I was watching ringside. And I, I almost felt sorry for O'Sullivan, almost. Um, you know, it was like it was like the bully at school, the year 11 bully picked on the year 7 kid and nicking his lunch money. I almost felt sorry for him. And the reason why I didn't is because, again, buffoon. The whole build up, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Fight night comes, O'Sullivan did jack, did nothing apart from take uppercuts like that, like a, like a bloody Churchill dog. I mean, oh my god, it just. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't know, mate. I thought, you know. After that, and then he, he quits. He, he quits in, in whatever round there was. He had a perforated eardrum. I've had hundreds of perforated eardrums in sparring, and I've carried on the spar. And I've come back and sparred the next day. I've boxed with dislocated shoulders, and I haven't jacked it in. He's a guy, he's meant to be a warrior. He's from, a, he's, he's from Ireland. The Ireland, of, you know, they always produce world class fighters and warriors. People like Barry McGuigan, tremendous fighter, lovely chap as well. Steve Collins, again, tremendous fighter, lovely chap. Carl Frampton now doing his thing for Britain and Ireland. Like, Tremendous for one of the best in the world at the minute. Even like Conor McGregor, you know, in the UFC, proper fighter. Then you've got him who whinges and pulls out for perforated eardrum. I mean, mate, do me a favour. What's what's wrong with you? And he's so where, where did it come from? I think I did an interview with you at the beginning of the year, and you were saying I said I need a few fights back and I'll be ready for the likes of. I chucked out a few arbitrary names. His must be one of them. I didn't even realise. I never even watched your video back. So at the time he just fought Eubank, you know, he's, he's up there around the domestic boxing. But since then he's done nothing. He, he, he took an absolute paste in and done nothing since. But sit, other than sit on his armchair, eat donuts by the looks of it, and just tap the O and G key, keys on, on his keypad. Boom, 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 I'll go, go this, I'll go, go that, mate. Whilst he's out wearing mankinis, who wears mankinis nowadays, mate? Who, who does that? Borat came out 10 years ago. If you want a stag do 10 years ago, yeah, fair enough, it's quite funny, but 10, mate, come, get to date, what's wrong with you? And if you are going to wear a mankini, do a sit-up, mate, it's in the shape he's in. Jesus Christ, but listen, I mean... But listen, there does seem to be some sort of public interest I'm, generating around this social media-wise from what I've seen. Is this a fight that has an interest to you? Do you see this fight being 
of any benefit to you to take this? I'm I'm I'm, I'm in sovereign. boxing because I I, I want to become a world champion. I mean I, I want I've, you know, I've rang you, obviously we spoke this morning on the phone. And I said I, I want to become a legend in the sport. And like many many years down the many many years down the road, and I'm I'm doing what I've got to do every single day to you know to make that happen. I've got my agenda. Right now that fool because of how how he is an embarrassment to himself. He, he doesn't fit into my agenda. He's 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 below me. He's, he's, I don't, he's, he's calling me out. I'm not calling him out. I can, can care less about him. I want, I've got three things I want to do this year, Coogan. I've got three like, agendas I want to kind of fill. I want to, I want to win a title because I've been in boxing for a long time and I'm not, I'm not money driven at all. I'm, I'm driven by titles and, and winning and becoming a champion of some sort. I've been a pro now for three and a half years and I've had to come through a lot to, to be standing here to you today out, outside the gym. And I want something to show for it. I want a title. No, he can't help me with that. He's got nothing. He's got nothing I want. He's got bad dress sense and a silly Freddie Mercury moustache. I want neither of them. I want a belt. He can't help me with that. Secondly, I want to fight in Norwich. I'm my home city. I haven't boxed in Norwich since 2010 in the ABA. So I really want to fight you know, back at home in, in East Anglia. I remember being a kid watching John Faxon fight there, watching Herbie Hyde fight there. And I want, to, I want that so bad, you know. And to do that, I'll have to obviously top a bill have a title, win a title, defend a title, or, or, or challenge for a title. Again, he, he, he can't help me with that. If he goes out and gets a title that I want, mate, jump in your little car, come to my ridge, and I'll bash you up for it. I, I couldn't, I'll happily do it. And thirdly, what I'm, I'm, I'm most important, I'm most excited by, and it's actually happening, I wanted to get up in the British rankings. I want to get right up there because I want to become British champion because I'm a very, very proud Brit. And uh, just recently, uh, the board have uh, mandated I've got to fight Elliot Matthews in, in a final eliminator. So, there's Elliot, who's, who's, Elliot, he's a good fighter, Elliot Matthews. He's, he's unbeaten, South Force strong, hits hard from what I gather. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't swallow it um, with a little perforated eardrum. And, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, my man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wouldn't swallow it at the first sign of trouble like, like he did, the other one did. So that's, that, that's, that's a great fight. That's a fight which will probably happen hopefully in November. Me versus Matthews for, in a final eliminator for the British title. Get past him and then, you know, British, British title fight, which I'm, which I'm really excited about. So at the beginning of the interview, I said that like now it's, it's now starting to get good. It's now starting to get exciting because these are the fights I want. The British title fights, European title fights, world title fights. That's, that's what I'm in this sport for. That's what I crave and that's what I'm, I'm so hungry for. Obviously, the, the current holder of that title uh, is still... Chris Eubank Jr., who faces his mandatory in Tommy Langford uh, in Cardiff um, in October. Do you expect the time when you're possibly in a mandatory situation for the British title that Eubank will still be there uh, defending his British title? Or do you think that he may have moved on if he was to get past Tommy Langford? Uh, uh, I mean, that's something I haven't really given given much thought to. Um, I want to become British champion, so whoever's British champion at the time, when I'm mandatory for that belt, I'll be ready, willing, and able to, to fight. So I haven't really thought about that, to answer with you. Um, that's 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 a possibility. I think I think if I'm just like you know, spitballing here, someone like me and if in Eubank, it could be a real big fight, a really really big fight. And no disrespect to the British title, like I said, I want that more now. I want that belt more now than any other belt I know on the planet. But I think me and him could be really big. However, saying that, if I'm mandatory for the British belt and can, can fulfil one of my stepping stone dreams and become a British champion, I'm not going to not fight for it because a particular name has, has got the belt. So, yeah, um, I mean, it is a good fight, but like I've said to you before, and that's a fight I would like down the road, um, how far down the road, it's up to the, the relevant governing bodies, but, um, and obviously you know, the, the athletes involved. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm excited to... To, to be here. I'm excited to, we, we did a run this morning with the boys and I mean, I, I, I killed it. Oh, it was nice to be able to kind of run again and, and be with the boys and just just getting better. Whilst people are on, on, on their little keyboards on Twitter, one around in mankinis, like making buffoons of themselves, I'm here, I'm in the gym, I'm, I'm in the gym, I'm, I'm, I'm out on the road, I'm making a beast of myself. And, and like, going back to O'Sullivan, if, you know, you bank, Perfect his eardrum, he hasn't fought for a year. If I ever fight him, he, he won't fight again. I'll, I'll, I'll finish him. And there's there's no, two, no two ways in my mind. And um, and that's the attitude I have for my opponents moving forwards now. I've 
I've got a steely determination that you don't just get. That I've got because I've had to come through a lot of hard, hard things. I've had a lot of, a lot of adversity I've had to come through. And I just want to crack on. I just want to crack on. I almost want to cut the interview down to go in the gym and start training. I want to just, I want to just crack on and yeah, become, become champions, then become you know, the ultimate world champion, and then sail off into the sunset, mid to late thirties. Um, yeah, and I don't know, maybe, maybe be a pundit. I don't know. All right. Well, listen. Um, I've just got one more question for you. Uh, sticking with the middleweight scene, obviously there's a huge fight next week um, between uh, Gennady Golovkin and Kell Brook stepping up from welterweight to middleweight. Uh, just your thoughts on this fight and uh, how do you see this going, finally? I think it's a really good fight. I think it's a really good fight. I've, uh, I, I know Kel. Um, I sparred with Kel years ago when I was an amateur and I really rate him. I really, really rate him. I think he's a tremendous fighter, Kel. Very fast, explosive, I think. Um, but obviously Golovkin is the best, best middleweight in the world right now. Possibly the best fighter in the world right now. So Kel's up against it. I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows that. But I think if any, any boxer... Could, could spring a surprise. I think it'll be a big hell. Whether he can or not, I don't know. I think Lovkin is just maybe just too big, too strong, and his boxing ability is just too good at the minute. Um, maybe one way he could have done it, maybe, but I think two weights might just be that jump a bit too far. However, saying that, if he was to you know, do the unthinkable and, and, and shock Lovkin, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. I, I, I do rate Kel, but give uh, Brook more of a chance against Golovkin than Eubank would have because that's the fight that we were previously expecting. Yeah, I think so. I think he's he's more experienced. I mean, Eubank, he's uh, he's been in with a couple of good fighters um, and he's been found out once in his first step up. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's levels fighting certain people. Um, <laughs> mention no names in particular. And then fighting the Saunders, and then going on again to fight a Golovkin. There are levels in in in, in that kind of trajectory, but um, yeah, I think I think Carroll, because of his experience, I mean, he's, he's fought Sean Porter, who at the time was a really really top fighter, and he's he's looked brilliant every time he's defended his welterweight belt. So I think just through experience, really, you know, he's been a pro for a long time, Carl Brook. Through his experience, you know, he's gone through a lot of training camps, and um, I think he'll put up a better fight than than Eubank would have. But no, we'll, we'll see. I'll be. I'll be watching with a keen interest because, um, like you said, they're middleweights and I'm a middleweight and those other guys, the Golovkins, are the guys I want to fight in. And then I'm scared now saying arbitrary figures because what happened last time? I said an arbitrary name and then you know, all, all, all this commotion started. But, you know, in a couple of years time. retaliation video, maybe? Hey, like I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, in, I'm not in I'm in, in the, the industry. Mate, he, he should be in, he should, he should jackbox things, ain't that good at it, and take up, take up, Drama and theatre studies or something because he, mate. To be fair to him, he's he's got some. He's either got a bit of balls about him or he's got a screw loose. But not in the not in the good like Sonny Liston way. He's got a screw loose. And he, he's a dope. I mean, I feel sorry for him. Who, who kisses someone that way? In who does that? Mate, he's, he's a joke. Like I said, I ain't in the industry of putting videos out there. Whilst he's doing that, tapping his little key, the OG button on the keypad. I'm in the gym training. I'm sparring. I'm on the bag. I'm out on the road. I'm in the weights gym. I'm getting better. All right, well, listen, I'm going to let you uh, get back to training because I just pulled you out of your session. So I appreciate your time, Thank Mr. You. Gogo. And um, hopefully uh, we'll catch up with you uh, potential, potentially in a month's time. You yeah. may be out. Sounds good. Sounds good to me, mate. All right, Coogan Cassius here with Anthony Gogo for IFL TV. Thank you very much.